face to stay with us on the conversation on the first half with those situations in South Africa, where the president has withdrawn the ministerial handbook amendment for 2022, which gave free rights to uh, ministers, electricity and water supply. We also discuss about South Africa's president on apologetic support for the Sarawis, that is the Westerns in Western Sahara. And right now we move on to Zimbabwe, where dozens of people have been reported injured in recent attacks by political parties as preparations for the local authority by-elections to be held in the two wards in Matabeleland, South Province, reached an advanced stage. The Zimbabwe Election Support Network denounced the attacks on Citizens Coalition for Change members by suspected ZANU-PF activists in Matabele region, saying political party leaders and their supporters should foster peace ahead of the 2023 harmonized elections. Zizan made the call amid what he said is the prevailing toxic political environment, which has been characterized by a spate of inter-party as well as intra-party violence that occurred in Matobo and in Siza. In Matobo, on the one hand, Frederick Siwela from ZANU-PF, Ms. Sinzinso Ngwenya from CCC and Liberty Irongo from ZAPO were battling out for the seat that became vacant following the death of ZANU-PF councillor Tom Moyo. On the other hand, in its Caesar district, Daniel Dube from ZANU-PF and Augustin Gumede from CCC are vying for the council seat, which became vacant following the death of another ZANU-PF councillor, Lawrence Maposa. And now joining us for this conversation, we have Tafadzua Mugwadi, Director, Information and Publicity, ZANU-PF Zimbabwe. We also have Sidix Murad Zigwa, Sikwa, political and governance analyst all the way from Arare, Zimbabwe. We also have Linda Sungurirai Maserira, President and Labour Economist and African Democrat, also from Arare, Zimbabwe. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to the conversation. Thank you very much. We're delighted to be here. Thank you. So I'll begin with you, Linda. So we had reports and we saw both ZANU-PF and Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC members, making reports of political violence in Matobo, and both of them denied any wrongdoing. Do you have a clearer picture of what exactly transpired? Um, I think the details are still sketchy because uh, both sides are coming up with different statements on what particularly happened. And um, it is actually very sad that uh, both the ruling party and the biggest opposition are still engaging in violence at a time like this, where we are supposed to be preaching peace, where we are supposed to be preaching unity, where we are supposed to be preaching tolerance and actually practicing the same. So it is a, a, a real cause of concern that um, we still have in political violence at a time like this, where we need to be working together for the economic development that we have been thriving for for a very long time. I would have to get back to you shortly while we try to get a clear audio, but we also have it all Sidix. Now, uh, Sidix, you heard from Linda, and she's quite disappointed with this violence going on, especially from these two sides. Now, what exactly was your own take on what transpired? Because according to her, it's still sketchy. Do you have a clearer picture? No, I don't have a clear picture on what really transpired, but um, I've just... Uh, uh, been in contact with uh, the media uh, and uh, other quarters of the society who witnessed um, the events that uh, erupted in our country in terms of um, the political violence that occurred uh, in the uh, and uh, south province of our country. Okay, Sidik, so prior to this incident, how have the campaign processes been like? Has it been peaceful or has it also been violent? Sorry, come again. I said prior to this particular incident, this recent one, how has the campaign process been like? Have they been peaceful or violent? That is uh, actually the nature of um, the Zimbabwean politics that caused the political divide. A lot of violence is usually okay uh, pre, uh, pre and post election uh, period. So it's uh, regrettable that uh, even up to this day, we have got the new dispensation. And as citizens of Zimbabwe, we are still witnessing 
this uh, monumental violence uh, uh, violence act uh, whereby we try to move in as a country to have um, democratic participation we have, we try to have uh, election which is peaceful and free from violence but over and over again we have uh, we, we witnessed um, a lot of violence uh, coming across uh, the political divide whereby those who are uh, running for offices uh, they fed and uh, support those acts of violence. So it's absolutely a shame uh, for me to say that as a country, uh, we are not going anywhere. We are not developing in terms of our democracy, in terms of uh, our culture uh, of political uh, participation and, and uh, political tolerance. Uh, now, how many people were injured as a result of the skirmishes? Do you have any details of that? Uh, I'm not in a position uh, to. Uh, uh, authoritatively state that uh, this number uh, is actually the correct number of the people who were injured in these uh, violent uh, acts that arose uh, in Zimbabwe. But uh, I can I can attest that uh, there is a quite number of people who were uh, injured. Some of them, uh, they assert that they would lose their lives uh, as a result of these um, uh, unfortunate incidences. But uh, a lot of people have been uh, uh, injured, uh, have been involved in beatings, and, those, uh, and uh, several property uh, has been maliciously damaged uh, as a result of uh, the incident that occurred. Okay, thank you so much, Sidex. We also have joined us, uh, Tafazwa Mugwadi. Now, Mugwadi, from the incidents, we have the CCC complaining about violent reports. The ZANU PF, the ruling party, also complaining about violent reports uh, from this uh, campaign processes. How would you describe the political environment in Zimbabwe presently? Uh, thank you and good evening to everyone. I must say that uh, it's quite uh, sad, very much sad that. Uh, uh, in this era, you still find people taking violence as part of their project for for the for the elections. We saw when these are just by elections, you just have to wonder whether these people are really serious about that conduct ahead of 2023. It's because you know, from us as ZAMPF, yes, we are very clear about it. Our president and first secretary, who is our candidate for 2023 general harmonized elections, Comrade Jitim Nangakwa, has been very clear. No to violence as a means of mobilization for political support. And no matter what your rank or file in society is, you must never employ violence as a tool of political mobilization. That is the conduct we try by all means to abide as a ruling party, not with this tending. The unbridled provocations that we face on a daily basis. I might just need to tell you that as we hold this discussion, it's quite unfortunate that some of our colleagues, including those that uh, uh, purport to represent civil society, are not very truthful and honest. Just last week, we lost a young man called Mafangira at Mbare Msika, where there were schemes involving our party supporters and opposition supporters of marketplaces. And a ZANPF young person was killed in broad day life, in cold blood by opposition leaders. And they don't want to talk about it. No one wants to talk about it. No member of the civil society has issued a statement about it. Not so long ago, when we had violent incidents in Nyatsima area in Chitungwiza, we lost a, a, a female uh, Zimbabwean called Mob Blessing Ali. In the process, they mobilized the violence which resulted in the banning of shops, arsoning of vehicles, wanton beating of citizens at the hands of Mr. Jobs and Triple C. No one talks about it and condemns that because it has been done by the opposition. Now, coming to the incidents that took place in Matoko, we were the first to issue ourselves as the ruling party by way of a statement to say, indeed, we had received the reports, very sad reports indeed, of provocation provocative behavior at the hands of the opposition, who threatened and started chasing Zanpia vehicles, driving in pursuit, what pursuit of them. If you look at the video they have been trying to skim about and to, to, to spin, it shows exactly that those ladies were lying. One, they were lying that they were being shot at. 
You can agree with me that those ladies were not recording a video at the same time dodging bullets that they said were aimed at them as they would say, and I quote, they are shooting at us. There was no shooting anything that has been recorded there, except that there were disturbances provoked by them. Were just, and in that video, it is clear their car mm -hmm. was pursuing Zanzibar youth who were gathered peacefully and they disrupted their gathering, started chasing them away, calling them Gukurahundis, telling them to go back to, to Mashona land area and that they were not coming, they were not from Matebele land south. And on top of that, they hired hooligans from Blawai province, the seat of Blawai CCC hooligans, to cause havoc in Matobo, which was quite regrettable. Okay, but Ma Mugwadi, Mugwadi, that, Mugwadi, there have also been complaints that the ZANU PF is trying to silence the opposition and even had arbitrary arrests of some opposition members of parliament. How would you react to that? It's, it's not about whether the person who has, been who has been arrested is a member of parliament or not. Otherwise, if you take that approach, you are saying the law is not supposed to be an equalizer. If this director of information is engaged in acts of violence, that, crim that is criminal conduct. What should come first is not about whether I'm a member of parliament or a director of information for the ruling part. That is not what the law, how the law applies itself in all jurisdictions across the, the length and breadth of the world from the polar regions to the south, to, 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 from the North Pole to the South Pole. You don't apply the law by saying, because the person who has been arrested is a member of parliament, therefore mm. that arrest is unlawful. You might need to go and visit the videos of that supposed member of parliament, whether he has been conducting himself honorably. He is the one who has been behind violent mobilization. And this is not information that I'm trying to, cro to, to, to cook about. It is an information that is found everywhere. It okay. is there when Mr. Joe Scala was saying he's mobilizing youth to revenge the death of Mobilesin Ali and that the families that he was accusing of having caused the death will be wiped away from the face of the earth. Now, the law, one critical component of the rule of law is that everyone is equal before the law. Myself, yourself, and that MP, and the street kid who has no home, they are all equal before the law. That is the rule of law. All that right, I'm a body. I just... Somebody is an MP. Come again. Okay, so just hold on on that thought, that because you're trying to defend the ZANU PF and saying that it's all in observance of the rule of law. I'd like to bring in Linda into all this. I mean, whether or not if it's ZANU PF causing the problems uh, which ZANU PF has clearly denied or CCC, uh, there's clearly violence going on in the electoral process. And Linda, what adverse effect do you think this would have on the electorates? Um, I think we need to be clear about uh, two things. Violence in Zimbabwe has always been between um, ZANU and, and lately ZANU and Triple C. And we should all see has always uh, done its politics in a manner that they want to set a certain uh, normative leverage agenda. Their agenda is they are always attacked, they are always uh, victims of violence. And like Mugwadi rightfully say, they are, in most instances, the agitators of violence. Look at the conduct of Triple C supporters on social media. They are always attacking everyone left, right, and center. And that is exactly what they do on the ground. And when some form of retaliation comes to them, they at the end of the day, what we need going forward is a peaceful environment where everyone accepts that politics is a contestation of ideas, not a contestation of fists and violence. That is what we need going forward. But unfortunately, he who pays uh, who, who, who pays the, 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 the piper determines the death of the children. So here's what we see, the, the, the country ungovernable, which unlike us, an alternative political party, we are saying, let's work together, having in Zimbabwe. And that the kind of attitude we need going forward. We cannot continue making the country ungovernable just because we want to get into power. We cannot continue agitating for violence, and when violence occurs, we start crying foul. I think Zimbabweans need to sober up and pick the city and participate in by elections and the forthcoming harmonized elections in a peaceful, tolerant manner because they're all Zimbabwe before they belong to any political party.
All right, thank you so much, Alinda. Now, Cidex, uh, talking about having a peaceful environment, uh, this is one of the responsibilities of the National Police. Now, the National Police spokesperson, Assistant Commissioner Paul Iniati, said investigations on the Matoba political violence were on the way and the culprits will be brought to book. Now, how confident are you in the Zimbabwe Republic Police? Cidex, can you hear me? All right, uh, Linda, if you can hear me, could you kindly tell us your position on that? Are you confident in the Zimbabwe Republic Police to make sure that the culprits are brought to book? On um, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, I think they still have a problem where they are not settling the cases and issues to do engaged in any form of violence should face the full wrath of the law. Besides, and this is something that we've been talking about time and time and again at the engagements that we usually have with the therapy officials. Uh, what we need is a, is a police uh, uh, that is fair, that works diligently, that makes sure that anyone who breaks the law will face the full wrath of law without fear or favor. Okay. Now, Mugwadi, while we're still looking at having a peaceful environment for the elections, this by-elections we're having are holding in areas previously held by ZANU-PF, your party. Now, are you confident that ZANU-PF will retain its position? Uh, thank you. Ultimately, we remain very confident, and that is why if you want to be statistical in your comparison, the majority of by-elections that have taken place have been necessitated by the faction of fighting in the opposition, resulting in recalls. And among those uh, by-elections that have risen out of recalls, we actually won more than 14 council seats from the opposition previously held by the opposition. We only lost two in, uh, in much south. So, Yes, in much South Subulilima constituents, we lost it two words there. But in terms of all those that have taken place in areas that were in charge and by elections were caused by death, we have managed to retain all of them except two. But we have also added the number of 14 on top of that that we previously held. So the texts are in favor of us, but this is not anyway by chance or accident. We have tried our best to be accountable to the electorate. We have a program of action that is very clear. We have a president that has remained very true and honest to that program of action. We had a social contract with the people of Zimbabwe in 2018. And in the People's Manifesto, we promised that we wanted to do one, two, three, four, five, six things. And of all those things that we promised, if you go back to our rule book, the Manifesto, nothing has been left unattended. It's either a project is in motion or it has been completed. This is how ZANPF has transformed under President Emerson Nangagwa, and we are happy the ground, the grassroots is warming up to that transformation. As we say, the country is built by its own people. No outsiders can build our own country, and Zimbabwe, that we want, can only be a product of our own hands. No Japanese, no Chinese, no British, no American will come and build this country. And mm. people are embracing that philosophy we're actually shocked by how much people are embracing that philosophy and that is why we remain glued to peaceful engagement and peaceful means of mobilization aside of violence My, by the way i may just need to remind the opposition leaders and their supporters no one benefits from violence no one can also claim to have monopoly over violence and on top okay. of that i must say no one can claim to be a winner over violence. Anyone is a potential victim. I'm a potential victim. Everyone is a potential victim. Let us abide by the president's directive and the, the rules that we have. The president speaks as one, the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, and secondly, the president of ZANPF as well. If there is a ZANPF person who is behaving violently, you'll, the law will catch up with him. And we encourage law enforcement agencies to be very clear and continue to exercise their responsibility as provided by the Constitution and abide by the conduct they have shown thus far by making sure that no sacred cows when it comes to violence, because our president is committed to healing our society 
to ensuring that we have credible, free and fair elections that are above bar ensures that Zimbabwe indeed is a thriving democracy. Okay. All right, now, Cynics, uh, we have a size of ZANU PF, other opposition groups, and uh, let's look at the Citizens Coalition for Change. Uh, we had them up in 24 January, and it's from the former MDC Alliance champion. It's led by Nelson Chamisa. How would you rate its popularity among the people since deception and even the chances in the 2023 elections? Well, that's just well we need. We know that, uh, you know, the difference between the opposition led by Chagrai, then now led by Monzora and Chamisa, is that they are not a revolutionary party. We are not a, we are not a movement. We are a revolutionary organization. We have a symbiotic Siddiq, relationship so, Sorry, Mugwadi. Sorry, Mugwadi. Please, I, I would like to hear from Siddiq on this. Sorry. Mugwadi, can you hear me? I, I would like your position on the CCC's uh, uh, appearance in the political party led by Nelson Chamisa. Is your party afraid of the CCC? Oh, that's why I'm saying we can't really be found to be afraid of uh, ephemeral and sporadic movements that just come and go. You know, these political parties are fly by night organizations and desktop uh, activists. They come and go. They are like desert storms, make a lot of noise within moments they are done. You may have seen that when they were the MDC. They were formed as a movement, and movement by their very nature never means to be permanent infrastructures. So, you know, but you look at us, we are a colossal revolutionary party with both history, a program for the present and the future. We have a symbiotic relationship with the people of Zimbabwe. Born out of the sword and the blood that was shed for the liberation of this country, it was Zan PM, Zipra, and Zanla. We did not end there. We reunited our people with their land in 2000 and got punished by it. The punishment that we suffered as a result of sanctions was called upon by those in the opposition. Now, the people of Zimbabwe know that we could have doubled our efforts in terms of development if we didn't carry the yoke of sanctions on our head and mm -hmm. our necks. But because of these opposition groups and their proxies in the civil society, we are having to pay a price over a crime that we didn't commit. We got our land. We got punished for that. Now, going forward, you now have these ephemeral movements, as I said, these sporadic movements, comes and goes. We have, to the contrary, a Zanfia party that boasts of structures of mobilization okay. whose tentacles are spread across the length and breadth of the country from Zambia to Limpopo. They don't have it a structure. They are not accountable to anyone. There's all right, all right, Mugwadi, unfortunately, I'll have to let you go. But that's so much confidence coming from the ZANU-PF. And, of course, uh, waiting for what is going to happen in 2023. We'll wait for Zimbabweans. I mean, a lot of assurance is coming from ZANU-PF. We'll wait for 2023 and even this by-election to see the outcome. Thank you so much to Fatwa Mugwadi for joining us, Sidiks Morazikwa and Alinda for joining us on the conversation. And unfortunately, this is where we'll draw the curtains for today's edition of The Conversation. I am Rita Omodia to join me again on Friday for another edition of The Conversation.